is not one of the residents in this compound. They already took one person at the downstairs, so they tried getting entrance to this person's residence. Thank God for him. He's safe. They could not get him. And I thank God for my children and I, we are safe as well. This is what this country has turned into, that nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. They come to your house and kidnap. This is where we have got into. This is what we have found ourselves in this country. This happened today at about 12.30, at about 11.30 to 12 in F1 Abuja. This happened in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. And the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is silent that his base, the seat of power, has become a hotbed for criminals, for kidnappers, and he is silent. The Federal Capital Territory, FCT, is facing alarming surge in insecurity, prompting growing concern among residents and authorities. The capital city, once considered relatively immune to the prevalent security challenges in other parts of the country, is now grappling with an escalating wave of criminal activities, particularly kidnappings. According to a 2020 report by S.B. Morgan, Abuja was ranked 11 among locations with frequent adoptions, a stark revelation of the evolving security landscape in the region. Over the last three years, close to 50 kidnap cases have been recorded in Abuja, involving over 200 individuals. The severity of the issues become more apparent when examining the data from January 2021 to June 2023, revealing approximately 40 recorded cases with a staggering 236 victims. Between October and December 2023 alone, there were 13 recorded kidnap incidents impacting 80 victims. Please take note, these are recorded cases. These incidents are not isolated to specific areas but have occurred in various locations within Abuja, including Gwagwalada, Kuje, Lube, Pegi, Abaji, Keti, and Kwali. What is particularly concerning is that these incidents seem to occur unchallenged by security agencies, allowing criminal elements to operate with impunity. The economic toll of this rising insecurity is substantial, with confirmed Ransom payment totaling 657.7 million between 2021 and 2022. Residents and businesses in affected areas are bearing the brunt of these security challenges and the impact on daily life and economic activities is becoming increasingly pronounced. Recent individuals' accounts, such as that of Sarujudin Olasinde, a public servant, shed light on the personal traumas experienced by residents. On last thing, they narrated the kidnapping of his wife, Mistura, and two daughters, Hawa and Fatima, around the Galadima district. The kidnappers demanded an exorbitant 100 million ransom, highlighting the audacity and brazenness of criminal elements operating within the city. Ultimately, a negotiated settlement amounted to 2.8 million naira. In the latest surge of criminal activities plaguing the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, a subsort of the Buari Area Council, Sagwari Layout Estates in Duse, became the ominous stage for a Brazilian adoption. On Sunday evening, a group of kidnappers masquerading as herdsmen infiltrated the estate, snatching eight residents and two hotel staff in a daring assault. Another dire reality persisted with incidents like the December 24 invasion of Garam community, located just a five-minute drive from Gwari, resulting in the tragic killing of a pastor and the adoption of 13 others. Subsequent bandit attacks on December 28 targeted Kuduru in FCT, leading to the kidnapping of 18 individuals. The alarming series of criminal activities in the Federal Capital Territory paints a grim picture of escalating insecurity across the nation. In a disheartening development related to the recent adoption in Duse, kidnappers reportedly killed three victims, including a 13-year-old high school student, due to the perceived delay in meeting the ransom demand. The initial demand of 60 million per person has been escalated to 100 million, totaling a staggering 700 million naira. To say the very least, the killings and kidnappings are highly regrettable. 
To think that such acts of criminality could take place at the seat of power is disheartening. For some time now, daredevil criminals have taken different parts of Abuja, Nasarawa and Niger state by storm without any meaningful resistance by the authorities. Abuja is the FCT, the seat of the federal government and the national headquarters of all military and paramilitary agencies in the country. Abuja is relatively well planned and the office of the Abuja Geographic Information System is by its own admission constantly reventing the city to fit in with the Abuja master plan. Ordinarily, surveillance equipment should have been deployed by now to cover the entire territory and give it the dignity it is supposed to have as Nigeria's capital city. Indeed, considering the fact that the FCT is the seat of multiple government and foreign embassies, it is unfortunate that the kind of kidnapping and killing witnessed in recent times took place. What kind of signals are the authorities sending to the outside world? The most worrying aspect of all this is the fact that the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Metinibu, has not held a nationwide broadcast to address this insecurity ravaging Abuja and allay the fears of residents in Abuja and Nigeria at large. But rather the President, in the heat of the moment when citizens were crowdfunding on social media to pay for the release of one Nabiha and her sisters that were in kidnappers then. The Nabiha has been killed. Citizens took to social media to crowdfund for fun and even the former Minister of Communication, Issa Pantimi, also contributed to the release of these citizens. But then the President, in his utmost importance, decided to attend the swearing-in ceremony of Hope Uzodima, who has been re-elected as a governor of Imo State. Isn't this shameful? The upsurge in criminal activities, including armed robbery and kidnapping across the country, should be a source of concern to all because of the decadence and the collapse of society it prefigures. Crime have become not isolated events expected as part of the imperfection of human life and the world, but permanent and pervasive features of life today in Nigeria, and what remains of life where crimes rules almost the entire government of existence. Criminals are not only invading the bustling environment and abducting people and dispossessing shoppers of their belongings at will, they are also sniffling life out of citizens in a whimsical manner. The fact that criminals are everywhere and operate with impunity across the country, not bothering in the least about the feasible resistance from victims and the overall incapacity of the security agencies, is a clear sign that the fabric of the society and the structure of governance over it are substantially broken. It is not a norm to have a society and many of its members largely operating on and wanting to benefit from crimes and negative activities. The essence of society ordinarily has to be a productive engagement through which it produces and ensures continuity for itself. Knowing that anything else, particularly a resort to unproductivity, will only result in disaster. Surely those in charge of governance in the country ought to realize the ultimate destruction awaiting any society where crimes rather than productivity engagement have become the stock in trade. We expect them not to allow the mindless killing to go on unchecked, as they will surely end in disaster for all. There must be urgent action by the government to stem the drift into total collapse and give the country a chance of assuring itself of some level of continuous existence going forward. Concerns about security in the federal capital territory Abuja, the nation's capital, not far away from the residence and the office of the president, are issues relating to security on an everyday basis. We understand that Inspector General Police have weighed in on this matter, and in fact, he has raised the team uh, uh, to tackle this issue. Kidnappings. It's gotten to a point where people, Nigerians, are discussing ransom on social media and raising funds to rescue those that have been kidnapped. And there are issues of, uh, um, of one chance, if you understand what that means, is that you enter into a taxi and you do not know where you're going to end, whether in the den of a kidnapper or, or these criminals. Tonight, let's get a sense of why this is happening in the FCT, perhaps a place that is supposed to be the safest in the country. I'm being joined by Mr. Bulama Bukati, a lawyer and a security expert. He joins us virtually from London. Thanks so much, Mr. Bukati, for joining us. What do you make of this? What can you tell us about what is going on in the FCT? Sean, what is uh, going on in Abuja is a reflection of what has been happening across Nigeria. If you look at the data, you would see that over 
9,700 people were killed last year, that is in 2023, across Nigeria. And last December, over 880 Nigerians were killed and over 600 were abducted across the country. And Abuja cannot be immune to that because as long as you live in security to fester and flourish across Nigeria, then it will find its way uh, to Abuja. Cheon, you and I have held several conversations here last year in which we highlighted and warned that violent terrorist groups and criminal gangs have been moving from north uh, western Nigeria and northeastern Nigeria to uh, uh, states across Abuja. And uh, so Abuja currently borders four states that are harboring criminal and terrorist cells uh, in their uh, forests. Kaduna, Nasarawa, Niger, and Kogi, all of these uh, four states harbor terrorist uh, cells in the forests that are neighboring Abuja. And now these criminal gangs and terrorist organizations have been able to find a way of coming to communities close to Abuja and abducting and killing and maiming individuals. Uh, in, uh, from October 2013 to December 2013, the, three month, uh, the last three months of last year, over 200 people were either killed or abducted in Abuja uh, in the federal capital territory. And it is not just abductions and kidnappings, it is also increasing armed robbery across Abuja. Uh, in major junctions across Abuja, criminals and armed robbers masquerading as taxi drivers and as other uh, businessmen in the city, uh, I mean, kill, maim, and rob unsuspecting Nigerians in a way that we have not seen before. Abuja is becoming one of the scariest cities in the world. The scary, uh, is becoming one of the scariest capital, uh, federal capitals in the world. And I think the federal government needs to pay more attention to this crisis so that it doesn't drive away foreign investors, diplomats, and other visitors to Nigeria and affect Nigeria's international standing.